In this video, we're going to discuss why some firms might have accounts receivable that are actually growing faster than sales revenue. So let's say that you're analyzing a firm and you see that the sales are going up nicely over time, but then you look at the receivables and the receivables are going up and then all of a sudden there's a spike upward, right? So you've got your sales is growing, but your, your accounts receivable, it grows, but it all of a sudden has that spike. That's not the sales aren't spiking like that, but the receivables are. And you're trying to figure out why are the receivables growing so much faster than the sales. And this has actually occurred multiple times with firms. And you might have heard of a company called Sunbeam. Sunbeam made uh, consumer appliances, uh, so like they made grills, they made electric blankets, and so forth. And so in 1996. Uh, their net sales were 984,000, and then in 97 it was 1,168,182. So the net sales grew by about 18.7% from year over year, right? From 96 to 97, sales grew by about almost 19%. But receivables, their gross trade receivables, ended up growing by 36.4%. So you see there's a big difference there, right? You would understand if sales went up 19% or so and receivables went up 19%, but receivables went up by almost double. The percentage is almost double. So you, you might wonder, well, what's going on here? Well, Sunbeam actually had an accounting scandal. Uh, their CEO was a guy named Al Dunlap, and they called him Chainsaw Al because of how many people he fired. Uh, but basically they looked into it and they found that actually they were selling electric grills in the winter time and a bunch of electric blankets in the summertime. And they were saying, hey, well, who's buying an electric blanket in the summer? Well, they were actually following a policy called bill and hold where they would, they would have a sale. They would have a sale, but it would just sit in their warehouse and they wouldn't actually ship it out. And they, so then it's this issue of, well, okay, at what point does it actually constitute a sale if something isn't shipped out of your warehouse and you're just holding it for a customer? At what point have the, have the risks and benefits of ownership passed to the customer? So there were questions about whether these were real sales and Al Dunlap was actually forced out and, and he was banned from ever running a public company again. But I, I wanna give you some examples of, of reasons that you might have a situation where receivables are, are growing faster than sales. And, the, and, and one reason is, is basically similar to what Sunbeam was doing. You can have a situation where the company has, basically they have some kind of really accelerated revenue recognition policy where basically they're doing something, like you'll hear, hear the phrase channel stuffing. Like for example, let's say that the sales the sales team is having trouble meeting their sales targets or they want to get a bonus or something and they can't sell the product. They can call they can call their uh, the customers and say, "Hey, look, we got a lot of this product here. We'll get, we'll sell you a bunch and if you can't if you can't sell it, then just give it back to us. It's no big deal." And so you just basically give the product and it's not really a sale because the people are going to return most of it. Or maybe you give them a really deep discount and say, hey, you know, here's a deep discount, but if anything you can't sell, just give back to me. So call it channel stuffing, where you're basically forcing more product through the distribution channel than, than would otherwise be warranted. And so obviously that's not a good thing, and that's similar to what happened at, at Sunbeam. Uh, so that's a warning sign. If there's some kind of issue with the change the way they re recognize revenue, that could have where receivables are growing faster than sales. Also, if the company starts giving credit right as they start extending credit to a much broader base of people than they previously did so there was this company in the 1970s called wt grant and they i believe they made appliances and basically they had a situation where they wanted to increase sales and so they said okay look they told their store managers you could basically give credit to anybody who wants to buy an appliance anybody who wants to buy a product just, just basically give them credit to pr pretty much anybody, right? Instead of evaluating the people and saying, hey, are they really credit worthy? Is it really a good idea to extend credit to these people? And so people start going and they would go to different WT grant, they go to multiple WT grant stores and get credit at each one. And so they were extending credit to a much broader base of people. So that would increase your receivables much faster than your sales. And then also if you have a situation where maybe you haven't started extending credit to new people, but your current customers, the people that are already your customers, they're just not paying. Maybe there's a recession or something is going on that people aren't paying. And so you're getting stuck with a bunch of receivables that you're never actually collecting. 
And so if that, that would be a situation where your receivables would be growing faster than your sales. So just bear in mind that if you notice that receivables are growing at a much faster rate than sales, that doesn't always mean that company is engaged in fraud or something like that. But you should really look and see if it, these warning signs, is there some kind of situation where people aren't paying or they're extending, they've, they've changed your credit policy, or maybe there's something funky going on with their revenue recognition and you should